regular board meeting of the Waterloo Schools Board of Education to order and ask that you join me in a moment of silence. And if you'd please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Yes. We moved it. We moved it. It happens to me all the time. I start. There we go. Yeah. Oops. Uh, yep. <laughs> Sue's keeping me honest, getting me in the right spot. So. <laughs> and uh, we'll also begin this evening with our mission statement, and that is that the Waterloo Schools community commits to a com comprehensive system of education and support to assure that each and every student will graduate prepared for college, career, and citizenship, as evidenced by continuing education, pursuing a career path, and contributing to a community. Thank you, and I would just ask this evening, we have a few people who are joining us um, remotely and virtually. We've had a little bit of difficulty with uh, some of our cell phone service. I think the storms this afternoon knocked out some things, and so bear with us if we've got people, and it takes just a minute for our, uh, for our connections to be made. So um, the first item on our agenda then is a public hearing for the issuance of the school infrastructure sales and service tax revenue bonds. This is item A, and it is on page one. And so I would declare the hearing open and ask if there are any comments that have been submitted to the board secretary in regards to this school infrastructure sale and service tax revenue bond. No? Okay, thank you. And with that, then, I would entertain a motion to close the um, public hearing. So moved. Thank you, Jesse, and a second. Second. Stacy, India, you can arm wrestle. All right, and that does call for a roll call vote. So I would ask Jesse, are you in favor? Yes. I'm sorry, India. I'm looking at the wrong, like usually you're right here. <laughs> so pardon me, let's start with India. Yes. yes. India. And Jesse? Yes. And Sue? Yes. And Stacy? Yes. And Aster? Yes. Thank you. And Lyle? Yes. And chair votes yes as well. The public hearing is closed. The next item on our agenda then is item B, and this is the Waterloo Schools Return to Learn Plan, and this is for information only, and I will turn this over to Dr. Lindemann, um, and I know Dr. Mulhorn is here, and also Kingsley Botchway, our um, Director of Human Resources and Equity, will, uh, perhaps all three of you will be speaking tonight, but I will turn it over to you to sort of give us the 30,000 foot lecture. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, okay, here's, I'll let you take it. Okay. Okay. So. Ooh, it is really loud today, so I'll back up just a little bit. So, can I get it? Yep, yep. There Hi, you Michael. Go. This is Shanley. Okay. Um, so I gave you. Uh, it, it's already in the booklet, um, the the return to learn summary. But I actually gave you a, a sheet in colored print, um, just because I thought maybe that would spark your memory of something that we had sent out earlier. And this has been widespread. Um, we're getting this out to, I mean, it's been out to families a couple times and we're still working on it. So just a couple of comments and then I think maybe it's best to just open it up to questions that you might have. I know that, I mean, we don't have hours and hours and hours, but we certainly um, will, will entertain questions that you might have. So just a couple of, of comments. So when we, when, when we first started, um, when the closure happened, the governor and the Department of Ed commissioned us uh, all districts to create return to learn committees which well actually to re yeah to to uh, do a return to learn plan and so um, we in Waterloo schools we tackled it just a little bit differently um, we established uh, groups for each of the different areas the health and safety academic equity um, um, infrastructure etc so with that uh, we we felt like we had a very comprehensive process and so um, we had lots of community members on there, parents um, lots of staff members from all employee groups and so what you are seeing uh, really is a, um, a 
not a necessarily a consensus, but it is really the result of the work and the process that, that we um, investigated, the conversations that we had in June. As it turns out, and I've said this a couple times, as it turns, turned out, um, we actually did, they originally said we had to file our plan by July 1, and that actually ended up changing. So on July 1, all we had to do was to do give assurances that we were working a process. And so we filed that, actually I think we filed about um, four or five days early, and we just had to do assurances that, you know, are you, um, do you promise you're going to pay attention to health and safety? Do you promise that you're gonna have a plan for academics? Are, do you promise that you're going to um, do something and take care of students and, and address the achievement gap? And so we, we of course marked yes on all of those and then filed that. And so then that basically, you know, gave us time to continue. So we just released this on, um, I guess we re released it on the Friday. It was gonna be on August 3rd, but we released it a little bit early, I think July 31st. And so I uh, gave it to staff a, a day early. So if you look at the summary, that's really the best, quickest way to kind of see the things that are in the plan. I will tell you um, as, as the leader, um, I was really, proud of the plan that we came up with. Um, it, it really is a compilation of so many people's thinkings and perspectives. And so you're gonna see the, the sections on the health and safety, the academics, you're gonna see things like the staggered return. I happened to see the news last night and they, they made kind of a big um, reminder to our public about the staggered return. Um, Dr. Mohorn was just telling me she had talked to somebody over the weekend and they said, what do you mean staggered return? They hadn't heard of that as a parent. And so we're gonna continue putting that out. I do, um, Tara will, Tara's department will, help us with that, especially as we get closer. Reminder, now your students, you know, kindergarten and first and sixth grade starts on, you know, such and such dates. So um, working our way through that, our two uh, high schools, the East and West, are, are currently doing uh, planning for the every other day, the hybrid model. Um, we're, uh, if you go into student services, we actually are, right, we did day one today of our administrator retreat, and, and so we had, I think there are about 60 people there, Dr. Mohorn, is that close, 60, 70 um, leaders in our district. And so we are working through like, how are we gonna make sure that we serve our students? How are we gonna make sure we serve our staff? Because they have questions too. And so anyway, working through that, um, our operations is on there. Technology has done just an amazing job um, helping us get ready for what we need as as viewers know and as the board knows you voted earlier this summer on going one-to-one -one at the elementary level which we think actually buys us some some um opportunity um gives us opportunity so and and we're continuing to communicate so everything really this kind of this two-page summary um is just the the plan in a nutshell and and people can click on the document and see i believe it ended up to be about 21 pages there's a lot of amazing re, uh, um, information in there so i think we're really really excited about what we put together just to leave you before I open it up to questions, what I would tell you though is it really is um, continuing to be a work in progress. Not that we don't have, you know, we, ha we have something here, but it, it will be revised as we get more information. It is continually a, a, um, looking at revisions. We, we actually worked with the principals today and we're gonna have to tweak a couple things about, you know, we're even looking into like seating charts for the cafeteria. How will they, when they come in, you know, the students will come in by class. And so if you have fifth hour, um, when they come in, they'll sit here. So, I mean, all of those very specific uh, bells and whist whistles looking at that. So definitely being revised. Um, we are getting quite a few questions. Tara has been kind of working our return to learn uh, web or email account. And so it is RTL at waterlooschools.org, RTL at waterlooschools.org. And I, Tara, I don't know how many we're getting. Originally, the first couple days, we were getting 50 questions a day, which we were getting back to them really within no more than 24 hours and sometimes within 12 hours. So Tara, how many, like for example, today, have you, have you seen it today? Have you done today's answers? Yes, probably about 10 new ones. 10 new, okay. To our okay, yep, I noticed, yep. Yep, so she's saying that we had about 10 more questions today. And so it's, you know, it might be slowing down a little bit, but a lot of people, I, I looked onto it after, she, after we went through that first couple days and a lot of people were saying, thank you very much for answering. So it really is a very efficient way to get your questions answered. So probably more efficient than 
just emailing one of us because we're getting, I don't know about anybody else, but I'm getting, you know, five, 600 emails every single day. So emailing directly a question to that, that, quite, that email uh, address has not been uh, corrupted yet by all of the other vendors and all of the accounts. So if you do send it to that, we're getting back to you right away. So rtl at waterlooschools.org. Can you um, access that off of the, our main page? Uh, yep, waterlooschools.org. Yep, yep, and it's. I think it was. It's on the. It's on the. Uh, a hot link right on the plan. It's. I mean, I okay. think it's right Good. at the at the front. So we'll just make just sure to that make that's sure ever. that people can. Yep, it's and on you, here. It's on somebody. The somebody doesn't get the rtl.org. Yep. They could just go to the water. And rtl again is return, return to learn. To learn. Yep. rtl. And Jane, I'm old school, but. Do we have a phone number that we people do, can call? Absolutely. They can still call the 2020 number. They can still call our Waterloo switchboard. Absolutely. So, and Tara has been just right there answering a lot of questions. So, yep. Yep. They well, can call I just, us. And they, some people yeah. don't have access to email absolutely. or they don't want to put it in right. writing. Or, absolutely. So, and then you hear people that say, well, like you, Dr. Morhan said, I've never heard of any, they had never heard of that. Right, right. Well, Geez, yep. if you truly, people, if you have a question yes. about your student or what call they need us. to do or yep. where they need to go, you don't have commu computer access, just call yep. because we want your kids there, but yes. just call. Right, right. Um, so the, um, I guess maybe I would stop right there. I know that you're going to have some questions about the virtual, uh, virtual um, instruction that is ending well actually just ended so we have students who are signed up for that we are running approximately 20 percent of our students which is really where we thought we would be it seems to be consistent really quite quite across the state um i know i think cedar falls had approximately 20 percent um i've talked with some of the other urban urban schools urban network schools and all of them are running about 20 percent some 18 some i, I talked to one they were at 26 percent so that does but but right in that 20 to 20 you know 20 percent 23 percent 25 percent so um that's what we were gearing up for that's what we're pre prepared for now that we do actually know the names and the you know the families and so now we've got a lot of work to do that we can start even as as quickly as tonight um, making sure that we've got our staffing we're gonna you know schools all across the state of Iowa and actually in the nation are you know shifting teachers as they need them to make sure that you're teaching you know virtual and you're doing this and so we really couldn't do some of that until we knew which grade levels which buildings which um, so that that's a really good good step going forward um, one of the things that you're gonna see coming out very shortly is the opportunity for people to truly sign off on their transportation to make sure that we know who's getting transportation and who isn't so there's some big stuff to to come there's a lot of things in the works right now and so we are um, it is going to be fast and furious between now and the 24th of august so with that um i think maybe it's best to just open it up to any questions that you have and and we have dr mohorn we have um, Kingsley Botchway here, uh, Terrace here, uh, Pam, who was, I could toss a shout out to Pam. Pam was really kind of the organizer of the Return to Learn plan. She didn't write it, but she really was the facilitator. People kept giving her the information and she made it look nice and she, you know, asked questions when it came in, you know, that doesn't make sense. And so people had to rework them. So she really did the the lion's share of the work of putting the document together. So it was, it was pretty amazing. So shout out to you, Pam. So. What about high school start date? Yep, high schools will be starting on August 24th on that Monday. And they will, students will be scheduled into the AB. Um, we will be, now that we know the virtual, students will be getting assigned their AB or A or B. Um, it is not just as simple as saying an alphabet. You know, A through, originally we thought we would do A through J is, you know, an A, but that's really, that's not what we're doing. So there is now a computer system that hooks onto Infinite Campus, uh, kind of a, a little add-on. And so it actually will look at our schedules, who's in which classes, and it will offer it will it will um, select or it will assign each child to an A or a B and it will split as evenly as possible. So while each class might not be exactly equal, it will give the path of least resistance 
through technology. So everybody will be assigned to an A or B and then students will be notified whether they are an A or B. We do anticipate the first day or two, it could be possible somebody comes on the wrong day. We stand ready to, to let them know they can, you know, they can stay, we'll figure it out. And um, if they rode a bus, we'll let them stay, we'll figure out and then we'll get them back on the right day. So, um, you know, we're gonna have to work that out. So good question. Um, you mentioned yeah. schedule. Like, yep. so um, if, especially high school students, um, can they still change their schedule because of this whole ordeal? Yep. 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 We have our, our counselors are um, available and so they can email any of the counselors and they are changing schedules even as we speak. Oh, so, yep. Yeah. Good they, to yep. know. They just started. Yep. Okay. They are back and so they have um, hours that are allotted to them to work through that process. So, yes, they should email their counselors and um, we'll, we'll work through that. Good. Um, I had two other additional questions. Yes. Um, so this return to learn plan, how different is it from Cedar Falls? It really is not very different. Um, the only difference is that they are bringing their high school students back every day. They have not uh, assigned an AB. Mm -hmm. um, they are doing everybody every day. So um, K-12. Mm -hmm. So, um, but other than that, um, I would say that it was a strong uh, desire of the superintendents within Blackhawk County to really look at the Blackhawk County guidance to make some decisions that would unify our county instead of having districts that had vastly different. So you will see some differences based on the nuances of a particular district, but for the most part, we meet every single week the superintendents within Blackhawk County, both private and public schools. And we have been sharing our plans and looking at those and, and trying to have some commonalities in that. That being said, again, there are some differences. And my last question was, um, the main points included in the communication part. Yeah. I think a lot of parents are concerned of how things will be communicated yep. if something does happen in the classroom or with the teacher. So how are we kind of addressing the communication part and sharing what, what we can share, what right. we cannot share, sure. how does that look like? Yep, so, and I think you're specifically talking about contact tracing, and so there, there is some very stringent guidance that we would use, and it has to be, um, there are some HIPAA rules that we have to um, adhere to, and so we will, there, if there is a, an exposure, parents will be contacted, but we will not be doing a general, let's say that, you know, we would, we, we cannot and will not publicize a fifth grader at such and such building. We don't do that. So if there are students who have been exposed to a, a, a positive case, then we would contact those parents separately, so. So let's just say like in the NOLA just was mm -hmm. announced. So you obviously it was addressed to the parents, but it, somebody like maybe a parent addressed it to the register. Yeah. Got it. Right. Correct. So, and that really is not what, I mean, that is not what we would want any more than, you know, we don't typically, I mean, we're, we are not charged with sharing private information, private medical information. Matter of fact, that's against the law. And so we, it, it would be against the law for a doctor to do that. It's against the law for a nurse to do that. And so we would be following the guidance from Black Hawk County and we would be sharing. Um, Kingsley, do you have anything to add to that answer or would, do you think I got everything? Okay. Yeah. No, thank you. Yeah. I just, because I had no parents were seeing it. You know, yes. people are returning to school, yes. they're yes. seeing the paper, and so people yep. need to understand that was right. not necessarily the no. school. That, just, matter of fact, it, it would be illegal correct. for a school to do that. So thank I'll just you. keep saying that word. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate that. Thank yeah. you. Thank and you. Black Hawk County Health is totally in agreement with all Absolutely. of our... Absolutely, yep. They signed off on our plan. They read it. Um, they have actually, I, I, would, I would throw, you know, a, a compliment toward our Black Hawk County uh, public health. We I've talked with other superintendents of other counties, and their health departments have been less involved than what our health department has been. Um, we actually meet with them um, at least every other week, if not more often. There were a couple times when we were meeting with them every week. So, and and Kingsley might be working with them every week. So, um, I talk with with Nafisa from Blackhawk County. I probably talk with her at least once a week, and sometimes two or three times a week. So they went through our plan, they made some revisions, some suggestions, um, they've worked on the, especially in the health and safety. Matter of fact, they were at the table since June when we launched our return to learn committees. 
So yes, they blessed our plan. They signed off on our plan. They are still guiding us on our plan. So as things come out and new information, we talk with them and we probably, I mean, I would guess going forward, we may be talking with them every other day to make sure that we are making the appropriate revisions that are necessary. And you can find their, they have a full plan on they do. going back to school on their COVID-19 website. Yes. The health department does. And so you will see you that direct. verbiage reflected in our plan. So we were yep. really, I felt like we were fortunate that they actually put out a, a school reopening plan. And I know that their, their particular plan was really circulated across the state. There weren't um, as many counties that did that. There were counties that did that, but those were, I think Lynn County did one, Black Hawk County did one, and other counties used some of the ones that were, were out there, so. Yeah, like, is it okay? I'm sorry, go ahead, Beth. I like the plan a lot. I think everybody on the team did a, did a great job. In evaluating it, I, I just wanna kind of double check that my understanding is correct. Mm -hmm. I outlined seven beliefs that I think are behind the plan. Some are stated, some are kind of implied. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to just kind of uh, voice those and then I have two questions regarding sure. that. So, uh, so correct me if I'm wrong on these beliefs, but the first belief is that education is the most effective means of breaking the cycle of poverty. Without a doubt. That's kind of an underlying belief. The second one is that virtual education at this point for most students is not equivalent to in-person education. The third one is large group gatherings, especially indoors, facilitates the spread of any virus, the flu, COVID-19 included, uh, and all other infectious diseases. Number four, the recommended procedures of social distancing, masks, uh, shields, hand washing, and so forth reduce but, not, but do not eliminate, cannot be expected to eliminate the spread of the virus. Uh, five, lower age people, especially the five to 17 age group, if you look at the online data, are not as susceptible to COVID-19 as most of the other groups and are relatively poor transmitters, but elimination is not an expectation. Correct. Uh, for that reason. Uh, six, an end date for the COVID-19 virus and any subsequent virus is not predictable. And then lastly, school systems ought to provide as much information to parents as possible in order to help parents make the most informed decision about what plan to choose. Uh, and on that last point, you know, that's because every student has a different risk. All these are all decisions, either by the district or by the parents or students, are a balance of risk and rewards. Mm -hmm. And so every student has a different set of risks. Every student has a different set of differential rewards. Uh, like I say, some learn equally well remote, some don't, most don't. And every student has a different susceptibility. So in relation to that last question, I guess my questions are going forward, uh, what information do we intend to gather and when can we publish it, especially hopefully prior to the next trimester or semester decision concerning a couple things? You kind of mentioned one, what's our transmission rate? What is the infection rate and what's the trend line? Uh, what changes have we made since the original plan in personal protective equipment or any other means of of uh, decreasing the risk mm -hmm. and then when will we have some information to compare hopefully broke down by by certain cohort groups the the amount of online learning compared to uh, in-person learning and I know that's a little more difficult but but if you, we have a pretty large sample group and so we should be able to decipher so you know are we are we setting up the measurements such that we're able to help parents make an informed decision, the most informed decision possible prior to the next decision point. Right, yeah. Um, you had a lot of questions in there and I'm not sure I wrote them all down, but the, the, one, the one thing I would definitely want to comment on, one of the return to learn areas that, were, that was um, sanctioned in the original 
document was data analysis, was actually its own separate subgroup. And I led that subgroup, that, that return to learn committee. And so we have prepared a, a, an entire matrix of, of all of the different things that we will be measuring. And they're actually for each of the groups. So in health and safety, we have a list of the things that we will be measuring along the way. Um, within academics, we have measurements that we will and, and that we will be tracking. So when we were back in the June meetings, one of the things that I did as the leader of that particular subgroup is I invited you know, Stephanie to come in and meet with our group and said, okay, tell us a little bit more about what the academic group is going to be doing. And then our group thought, okay, here's some measurements. And we say, what, what do you think should be measured? And then it was our job as a subgroup to document that. So we have a pretty good plan um, for the different areas. Now, what we're working on is the, the how, like what will be the actual metric? If we wanna know the gap data for when kids come back, what which which test will we use how will we disaggregate it what will it look like and so those are all of the the data pieces so i do believe this plan the measurement will be very data rich um but i think some of that will have to be tweaked as we go forward so um kingsley for kingsley joined us on the our our data the data analysis group we had kingsley join us and we said tell us what's going to be going on in the health and safety what things did you guys discuss um, now, what would the measurement look like? So we do have a pretty good plan for all of the different metrics. The, the trickiness for us, we still have some areas we have not resolved. Um, for example, if a student is virtual, one of the things that we have to do is, is do the, the screenings, you know, fall, mid-year, and spring for the FAST test. We've talked about the FAST test. It's a reading fluency test, reading comprehension test. So that's one of those. So if we don't have, and that, those tests are administered, if Stacy were my fifth grade student, I would sit down and would listen to her read and I would mark it and I would say, so the question is, you can do those, but it's just trickier so you have to get you don't have the kids all in your class so you have to you know you have to call okay andrew's virtual so andrew when can i log in with you when can i listen to you read when you know so it's not as easily done for our virtual students lyle i really appreciated your comment about um the assumption and the guiding principle is that virtual is as good as it can be but it is not the same as in person and so i think you hit it right and and actually if you read that's in our plan i mean it says our preference is in person, but we also understand there's you know a variety of considerations that would cause somebody to choose virtual. So, yeah, I don't know if I answered any of your questions, or uh, but that that will be a significant part going forward. We hope that the data that we gather through this will never need to be used in this scale, but I still think it'll be telling going forward because I think we're entering a whole new world of education. So, to those on the committee, Jesse, India, and Aster. Is it, I, it, do you have quarrel with any of those beliefs that are behind the that you listed? No. Okay. I mean, I think that my they, my, they my reading of it is, you know, it's. Uh, so I think he's saying. Yeah. I think the plans were well put together, but a lot of good work in there. They brought a lot of stakeholders into conversations. Yeah. Um, like anything else, the situation, any decision that. You know, the staff has made, administration has made, the board has made. There are going to be people who agree with it, there are going to be people who disagree with it. We try to be fair and give options, but there is no perfect solution going forward, at least for this year. And no, so, and, and it's an individual. It, it can be a different answer for every, for every most certainly. For and every this is kids. So, but we can give them as much information. That was my point. We, we need to provide, collect, and and uh, provide as much information as we as we possibly can including the evaluation of academics you know it doesn't need to be a perfect measurement i also think that we should also be even at some point you know we got to get the year going but mm -hmm. think about what we're going to do next year year after to help recover some of the gaps we're going to make because we're going to have to and we know we're going to make some gaps and we're going to figure out some creative ways to get those kids back where they need to be in their pathways and that's not an easy so that but really begs the question of what's our continuous improvement program for yes. both virtual and for yes. in person under these yep. circumstances and i'm looking at dr mohorn because during administrator retreat 
we actually had a long conversation over lunch about that very same topic. And we said, you know, our question is, what if students, what, what if what we're doing is not effective in um, resolving the gaps that have been created over the last five months? What if it's not enough? Mm -hmm. And so we had conversations about, actually, we actually went into two things. We started talking about summer school. We started talking about board policy. Mm -hmm. that may be needed to be enacted. We may be coming to you with some su suggestions of we, we cannot have students matriculate through the school process without an education. They just can't. And so what would that look like? And there may be some board policy changes. And I don't know, Stephanie, do you want to add anything to I mean, or, or have I captured our conversation? I don't know. You yeah, have. We have concerns. signed up versus students who have actually shown up mm -hmm. and there's a mm -hmm. huge gap in that right. mm -hmm. um, and so we're worried what if that happens during our school year mm -hmm. then what yeah. well it, you know part of it, we we need support from the community i 100%. mean parents everybody else right. that's out there grandparents you know friends family, community care try to get the kids you know right. it's their virtual get them to the get them to their spas get them into the buildings i mean we just we can't. Well, and I, I fear, you know, I think, Jesse, you're spot on. And my fear is that when we went through this spring during the closure, mm -hmm. the state uh, allowed districts to do either required or voluntary. We weren't ready to do, we didn't meet all the requirements to do yep. required, so we did voluntary. I cannot be emphatic enough. That is not the case starting August 24th. We are not on voluntary. We are on re required education. So, well, it, And that's just, what I it, thought yes. in here, maybe if we put mandatory Waterloo schools, mandatory return mm -hmm. to learn, because I do think there are still some yeah. people that think it's voluntary. It is not. And, <laughs> and, we, yeah, and we need to keep hammering that point that it's right. it's mandatory not voluntary and they that's need to understand what the consequences are <clears throat> yes. with that because yeah. there hasn't yeah. been and so right. we have kind of been right. walking in right and maybe we need a flow well, I mean, chart but, about but there, that there is there is consequences that we'll see i mean some of us maybe it's not as much maybe yet we'll see it at the uh, primary level but secondary you're going to see it because there's going to be kids that sign up for classes who missed content last spring who are not ready for the next set and they're going they may struggle now we may try to jump catch, catch them what we can but there's there's gaps that are just natural because they be voluntary only as voluntary and not as mm -hmm. i still need to be learning mm -hmm. and so there will be consequences it just may not be as as abrupt as it is now where we're saying you're getting not getting grades yeah. you know? I, I, oh, go ahead no well the someone asked a question to me it, will there be truancy <laughs> online people you know and and how are we going to monitor and um not punish but you know how how do we affect the change if kids aren't logging online or not coming to class i mean yeah. we it's state law to be educated right. until you're 16. yes and and that's funny because that's exactly what i was going to say oh. truancy laws are in effect mm -hmm. and that has been that was in the governor's proclamation that was in the that the department of education districts that have you know across the nation who have gone all virtual it has nothing to do with whether you're in person or virtual truancy laws are truancy laws and so you we cannot have a generation of uneducated children so we you know we, again we will likely be coming back to you with some proposed policy change that only the school board can enact because we we just we need students if you you have a choice <clears throat> But if you sign up for virtual, you need to do virtual. If you sign up in person, you need to do that. And if something happens and we have to, you know, work with the families, we are committed to doing that. So I, I, I will, I will promise parents that we will do that. But we're asking people to make a choice, and we're asking, you know, parents to work with us and to ask questions, and we will work with people to the best of our ability. What is not acceptable is to do nothing no. you can't it's yeah. required and the law is very clear that you must do something so I, we I may need to yeah. also tap into some of our community partners you know yes. i think um growth cedar valley's been great with they have been. at 
um, making sure that uh, employers are flexible these first few weeks when school starts and right. giving you know a little grace to their employees to get their students to school etc and we may need to do that similar thing about making sure that sure. our employers know that we've got to get our kids not just our employers our all of our partners know that we need to get our kids in their seats well, or in I their think to this point though is yeah. we need to underscore as much as possible that virtual education this fall is not the same as virtual education was in this spring. Right. And it's mandatory. Everything's yeah. mandatory. Yeah, that it's, it's not just more of the same yeah. at all. And that's a, I think that's a... It's critical because I think a lot of people still people. believe okay, that. Okay, Stacey, you go. I, mean, <laughs> I, I, I will say also, and I, I, send this out I, to the <laughs> I send this out to the community as well. It's like, you know, we're going to have challenges. We're going to have obstacles. The staff is working hard. The administration is working hard to do that. One, be patient as we work through it. I mean, you got to collect the data. You got to fully realize the situation for you to necessarily act and make decisions on it. Some may be fast, and some we may jump left when maybe we should jump right, and we'll correct. But be patient. And if you have questions, you have concerns, you know, going on social media and blasting it doesn't necessarily resolve issues. Pick the phone up, call, but be patient, and somebody will get back to you. I mean, just give us give us time to work through this because it is. It's not like most of us have ever experienced something to this degree, so we're all still learning as we're going. So, but be patient, please. So, one of the board policy changes that we we might need to consider is that uh, grade progression is based on performance, not uh, yeah. not time. That was our conversation. That's one. That, was our conversation. that was the one that came up today that we talked that about. Sure. Uh, yeah, because if students don't don't. Um, if they don't do anything, we just we cannot we cannot ethically and professionally pass them along without a plan. So yes, Stacy. Okay, Stacy, go. <laughs> okay. We're going to be done by six o'clock on this uh, uh -huh. this topic. And, <laughs> <laughs> so I made notes as I went. So if any of these are um, duplicates, just say eh, we answered that one. Okay. Mm -hmm. And first of all, I want to say that this plan is amazing. I was so impressed with it. I read through it several times. I know that going through it, I'm like, well, what about this? What about this? What about this? But mm -hmm. you guys, I know that that'll be something that you're looking at. Okay. So, and some of these are kind of smaller questions. Too. Okay. So with the mask thing, I was glad to see that the verbiage was changed about exactly what what the the issue was. Can kids still have like Bugs Bunny on their mask or are we not doing that? Because it says, okay. For a word like this, so somebody asked me, my own daughter said that it has words on it, mom, you can't yeah. use this. But I said, these are small enough words that no. I don't think we're gonna have to no. pick fights. They're in there. Okay. But I'm sorry, but right there, I just have to say that that was sent out with good intent. No, I agree. And yeah. it was when, like you said, we yep. jumped to the left, we had to go yep. to the right. Yep, we did. So it was we own it and, we, yep. and, and that. So true. Yep, and so I'm just yep. saying perfect point of we're not yep. set. We're not right. saying what we say is magic perfect and we're going to yep. make this work and you're going to have to do it. It's a fluid process. Right. And it does say face masks with school slogans or mascots, Waterloo schools, college, professional teams, patterns, plaids, tie dye, polka dots, fast masks or face masks with disruptive, offensive graphics or images. So Bugs Bunny, I, I, you know, the question is, if it has a graphic on it, the, the problem is, you know, what some some child sees as offensive is not what somebody else sees as right. offensive. So when the first when the first um, communication came out it was really like a it was an attempt to just make it easier because we have so much stuff going on we're like you know what bugs bunny is no problem but somebody else has you know um family guy or something or or family yeah. guy or or you know even yeah. we we've had in the recent past not to i don't know i hope answer doesn't pick up on this but you know we've had conversations about um, Duck Dynasty. Some people really yeah. like Duck Dynasty and somebody else finds it extremely offensive. So it really was an attempt to just make it easier. We have enough to do other than be the mask police. So, um, you know, other than wearing it, we'll, we'll police wearing it, but that, you know, so that's really where that attempt was. So. No, and, and I understood yeah. that completely. Yeah. I was just trying, because in here it does not really expand it enough no. that parents understand that 
we're going to okay. figure it out. Yeah, right. but you know, what we really <laughs> yeah. want more than anything is for your child to be in a mask. Right. And if Bugs Bunny is what it takes to get a first grader to wear a mask, then let's yeah. do that. I have a follow-up question, if I might, on the mask. Yeah. Uh, different masks muffle the sound differently. And if the teachers have to wear masks all the time, there's going to be yeah. quite a few students that can't yeah. hear. Right. What, what's being said? So what's our... Yeah, so there's a couple things I can tell you. First of all, we are looking at um, some kind of a like a plexiglass shield that the teacher can stand behind so their mask can come off. That's one thing. Not all masks are the same. And the other thing is one thing we've learned from summer school, which goes back to India's point of it's a work in, uh, or it's continually being modified. One thing that Dr. Mohorn came right away and said, you know what I've noticed at summer school is this, the teachers who are using the little microphone systems can be heard better. So they have their mask on, but they wear the little microphone that has a little, and, and it was amplified. And so she came and said, you know, I think we need to look at a modification to this. And so that's something we're looking in. So she instantly started working with people. What's the cost to that? So that that's one, that's a good example of something that may be modified before we get into the instructional piece, because you're correct. We found that with summer school, which is one of the reasons that I think that's a good, I mean, summer school's gone it amazingly well, but we've learned a lot already microphones so yeah does that help answer yes yeah. thank you good okay example. and so then um looking at when we're really encouraging obviously staff and students to stay home if they're experiencing symptoms how is that going to change then the days that they have missed school like for staff sick days mm -hmm. and students sick days what will that look like are they going to have to work on the days like if, if the staff stays home because they have symptoms are they going to be, have to be working on those days online? Are students expected to work on the days they're home? Well, I think part of that will be a work in progress, but I do know Kings, there are some laws that have already come out that govern that. Okay, so what do those will, say? Um, I don't have them right here, so we might have to okay. forward some of that. But. So from a student perspective, and Dr. Martin, correct me if I'm wrong, we're really treating it just like any other absence for a prolonged period of time where we're going to look at providing packets or some other things to get them through that time period, correct? Correct. And so in looking at it from a uh, staff perspective, um, truly the FFCRA guidance is where we follow as far as the Family First Coronavirus Act or something along those lines. and. That really speaks to, uh, in the event that they are off for an extended period of time, that is truly leave. We've walked through that a number of times, even right now, that that's leave, and so they won't be asked to work. Um, okay. Now, if they want to, it, just like any other sick leave, pro provide, um, you know, they'll have to provide lesson plans just like any normal sick leave, but if they want to help out even more, they can, but that is not a request on us. That's truly voluntary, and we're going to have that in the communication as a standard thing. Okay. I was just making sure that... The general public knows that this is what we're doing with our staff. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Kingsley. Um, and as far as the all virtual, so is that going to be like, let's say my child goes to Kittrell, okay, and she's a second grader, mm -hmm. um, and she's all virtual. Is her, Are her lessons going to be specific to what classroom she would have been in? Are we doing all second grade? Mm -hmm throughout the district exactly the same. So we are using an online system called Edgenuity and it is online yeah. instruction. So that will be used for all virtual instruction K-12. Okay. And so as far as one of the things that is probably our biggest task for this week, now that the, the application is closed, we mm -hmm. will start looking at, so for example, if you mentioned Kittrell, so let's say, these aren't accurate, but let's say Kittrell or, or elementary A has three kindergartners who chose virtual mm -hmm. and another building has 20 kindergartners who chose we may put those together with one teacher who may address the needs of both the kid building a and building b so that's what you know so that's why it needs to be consistent district-wide and not specific to one building because we may be for efficiency sake on staffing we may be grouping people depending now if one building has you know, 19 kindergartners and another building has 19 kindergartners, they'll each get their own, but that may not always play out. So that's our task for going going forward. I think in the next 48 hours, we're gonna know a lot more about that now that that is closed. But be, but through the ingenuity, they'd be getting the same content. They will get the same okay. content district-wide and that's by design because we may have to have certain right. teachers okay. teaching. Is it the same content as classroom? It's all standards-based. It's all yes. standards-based, so but it, it won't be a yep. different delivery method, but it's all based on 
may not be that everybody in third grade, whether you're virtual yep. or, or if you're in virtual, you may not shapes, get, may not be on the same page at the same time. Yeah, correct. Literally, I don't mean the virtual page, correct. but yeah. yep. well, and like in third grade, if you have a, a show and tell or whatever mm -hmm. in class, you're not probably having right. that right. on. Right. Correct. And matter of fact, some of the the virtual, which again, I appreciated the the acknowledgement that they are not the same. You know, if you are in virtual, you may not get banned. You may not get some of those because we, we just may not be able to offer that right now. We're up against a huge um, challenge. And so we're going to work through that the best we can. But, you know, it, it is not the same. So. Um, and so with the all virtual kids, are they ever going to see a teacher face to face? I know we weren't going to yes. do it as a group. Yep, they will. Okay. Yep, they'll see. Yep, they'll have lessons, and actually, the the system that we have actually has teachers that will pop up and explain something. But our teachers will be doing the same, so they'll kind of get right. two different worlds, right? They can have the um, the programs teacher. They hire people to mm -hmm. um, teach a lesson and to audio tape it, so you can actually read through it, or you can click and see a teacher present it, so you can do that. Or our teachers will be doing that same thing. And there's some stipulations that I can't reveal yet because I don't know that we've completed them yet. But our virtual teachers will have to log in so many times and have face-to-face -face with them so many times per week or whatever. So that's still a work in progress. So for the socioeconomic component of those kids, are they ever, though, with other kids when they're virtual with the teacher? Or is it always just going to be them one-on-one -on -one with the teacher? No, I think there will be some. I don't. I think there will be times when they're all together. They're, like in their spring. cohort group. Well, you mean in person? No, 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 no. I mean. On a Zoom meeting? Yes. Yeah. We're sure. still going to do that. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, bear with me a sec. Um, when will kids know if they're A or B for high school? I'm not we sure. Know? Okay. Um, just wondering because I know that like kids yep. are looking at for band and like yep. all these different things. Before August 24th. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yep. Okay. Okay, with our um, counselors. Mm -hmm. So I know we talked about adding counselors that we're not just gonna do scheduled, correct? Because like in the high school, that's 90% of what they're, right. they're doing, right? Is working with schedules. And right. um, like when my son was there, a lot of what he did with his counselor was making sure that his 504 was being mm -hmm. followed, all that kind of stuff. So are there additional, we were talking about that, have there been additional people brought in to talk, to deal with all the, um, the counseling services that were listed right. in under student services yes so i mean obviously we still have our full counseling staff and right. we have some additional things that are being worked on as far as the planning piece for um, the social emotional behavioral health wellness however we have enlisted the help and we actually did a flyer we sent out a flyer to all all i don't know what here did it go to all post office holders or did it go to all families i can't remember our mental health oh. Households, so everybody got it. So, um, so there are we're we're trying to coordinate systems mm -hmm. to make sure everybody has services that they need. And so um, we're working with Black Hawk Grundy Mental Health. They will okay. help us support us. And so that okay. that flyer, I believe, is actually linked into this, so people can look at that. But we will continually let people know that we worked on today. There's a what I would say a, like a tiered system. So there's certain things, certain. Um, social emotional behavioral health standards that we will present to all students but then we're training our staff to make sure they're looking for students who might need a second dose or extra supports and so those are those are in place ready to go for um tier two people needing right. extra or tier three people needing a lot of extra and that some of that would just be done students with and staff with our staff yeah. um uh but and then others. but then um forwarding them on yeah, right. absolutely. Okay. We, there are certain times when it would it might launch right. a referral to okay. a, a d additional support. We can provide a lot, but we're not everything, and so we may launch uh, additional. Support. And that's no matter if they're all virtual, face to face, um, everything. Yeah, no, we'll right? we'll still support them a virtual. Okay. It's it's a little bit different because we don't have we we may not have that full daily you know yeah. eight hour contact right. for virtual, but absolutely we stand ready to support. As, as best we can with virtual. Okay, right, like if a kid comes on and says my parents are both sick or right. something like that. Sure, okay, course. there's only I think two more, I'm sorry. So it says that um, on the AB days when the uh, high school kids are not in class, 
that there won't be attendance taken, is that correct? Correct. Is there just not a way, like, is there not a, right. a system that can be put into place to make sure they log on? Um, we can tell whether they log in, but the we, we are only taking attendance on the days that they are actually there. But there okay. still will be work. So, for example, yeah. if a student goes home and they work that night and they mm -hmm. get it all done, they may not have as much to do the next day, but there will be work okay. to do the second day. Got so they will still have to have the work done. So that's kind of the attendance tracker that's because their work needs to be done. Okay. Right. And on the days that they're off, will they have the ability to contact a, a staff, mm -hmm. probably not their classroom teacher at that time, if they have questions? Um, they would contact their, their classroom teacher to the okay. same extent that they may at home. I mean, if, uh, if any student has a question right now, they would email their teacher and their teacher oh, they would reply. Still, okay. so, yeah. I just didn't know sure. if that was gonna yep. be extra on yep. the teachers or, okay. Nope, they're still their students. So if they have a question right now, the in-person, okay. they would still ask their teacher. Um, and then, where was the last one? Sorry, my brain. I, I might have to come back to it. Otherwise, I think it looks wonderful. Um, I'm excited for it. Oh, the PBDA kids, are they going to be all virtual or are they going to be in school? They'll be in school. Okay. Mm -hmm. But they can do virtual? They, yeah, they can do virtual. Okay. Yep. So yep, how is the 50% calculated? Um, yeah. yeah, it's 50% of the days, so 50% of the instructional time. So they have to be there, in essence, five days out of the 10 days. Is that per, what you're asking? Oh, it's not the population. Per grade? Yeah. Mm -hmm. For, at, yep. At a grade. At, at a each, grade level. So, each grade level. Yep. So the fact that we're full-time on elementary doesn't help high school. <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> Nope, it's per grade level. So each okay. grade level, Percentage. if you are, you have to have at least, you have to offer at least 50% in person. So at least 50% of the time in person. So if we had gone to an AB for kindergarten, it still needed to be in person offering at least five days out of every 10. So just offering. It is. All right. Yep. So that yep. means though that will change if something happens and the Blackhawk Department mm -hmm. of Health says you guys need to yep, go back to all virtual. Yep, there's a stringent protocol that we would use, and then there are times when that can be exempted. So, yep. Well, kind of looking at what the governor had said, and um, I found it, <laughs> I'm always confused with all their verbiage, but it had said like you'd have to make days up. Uh, no, only. you you don't. Yep, only under certain things. So if you okay. if if you if you just make a unilateral decision without consulting public health and without consulting them, then that's that's a okay. little different. So they're trying to emphasize a collaborative approach. And I remember my last one. I'm so sorry. So um, I know a child who's been doing the Jumpstart, which by the way is amazing. It is amazing. Um, but this child, they're sitting two to a seat in the bus. Mm -hmm. Is that what we're going to be doing? Um, I don't have all of the answers for busing yet. Okay. So hold tight on that. Oh. The, uh, on I noticed that we're not live streaming or recording any classrooms. We are not. Why wouldn't we, in the case of the in-person, it going virtual for a week or whatever, mm -hmm. why wouldn't we use that to do that? We would not do both. We may live stream instruction, but it would not be a teacher teaching the kids in front of them and everybody oh. else looking in at that classroom and watching those kids. There's really a privacy issue there. So if we put that out, if I'm the teacher and I have 20 kids in front of me and I have a video videoing me teaching and you can see the kids or um, you can hear the kids or you can hear somebody's name called or whatever there's really a privacy issue there so we are actually making sure that it's it's there may be live streaming but not at the same time that you are teaching okay. in person children. some schools are that is true yeah some schools have chosen to do that so can a teacher do that if they want to uh, I, I I, don't I mean, as long so. as I mean, it's not showing other students, you know what I mean? Um, I think there will be some guidelines around that. Yeah. And Jane, I was just wondering, you know, obviously today was our last day for the virtual enrollment window. You gave us some preliminary numbers. Um, do we know, it's probably too early to ask this, you know, like, is it looking more elementary, middle, high school that are doing um, the virtual? And do we know by... Um, you know, um, diversity, do we know that? It's, it's a little too early for us to tell that. Um, here's, here's what I would tell you, here's, here's why. Um, we've been tracking it all along, but as um, Dr. Mohorn can tell you, 
we had multiple families who filled out the application multiple times. So if they had filed it one day, they filed it the next day, they filed it the next day. And so we are finding multiple duplications. And, and in some families where maybe the child lives, you know, one week with one parent and one week that with the next, we're finding that sometimes in some cases, both parents filed. And so we are in the process of doing a data cleanup and duplicate, uh, removing the duplicates. Uh, so we have a process if they, two parents did it, they did not in sequence. Yeah, well, then we will be calling them, <laughs> having those conversations um, and, and looking at that. So that and then the other thing is we've been very open about the fact that if a student has an IEP or a 504, we, we can't necessarily just blanket approve those. So we're looking at each one of those. So the, the, our, our um, teachers of special ed and our special ed department, they are they have lists and so we set it up that every time an application came in they got a duplicate of that that request so they could start looking and saying okay let's look at this child's goals can we meet them virtually which ones can we meet virtually which ones can we not and so they'll have to reconvene the iep team and have those conversations so once we get to that point we will be able to look at all of that data i would i would tell you this um the the number of virtuals the virtual applications assuming that you know we're, we're guesstimating there were a few hundred duplicates maybe am i close on that um if if that's how it turns out to be where maybe 300 families filed twice um if that's the case once those come out it it's really close to what we were anticipating and 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 sort of in preliminary preliminarily planning for so that? Well, 20% a, a is, is about where we thought we would be, and I think we're going to be really close to that, which, again, is really consistent across the state of Iowa. Anybody I've talked to, that's really about where most people landed. And so, um, you know, an 80-20 split looks <clears> like that's where it'll be. That's not exactly, you know, it might vary by grade level. It might vary by building a little bit, but not a lot. So, um, you know, we'll be looking at that data once we get our database completely cleaned, which should be... Stephanie, when, how long? Tonight? Tomorrow morning? They're working on it right now. They've been on it all day. So, And what was the total <clears throat> registration? Or total, did, you know, I mean, pe people can still register till school starts or beyond. Yes, they must but register. They must register, mandatory. Yep. But um, how, how are we looking numbers-wise, registration numbers? There's a, well, I don't know, because there are a lot of parents who have not registered yet. And so we've been sending out, you know, matter of fact, one of the questions on the online registration was, have you registered your child? And I think there were hundreds and hundreds of people who filed for a virtual application but haven't registered their child yet. Several and so, several yeah, hundred. several hundred. So we, we are calling them saying, don't forget, you've got to register your child. Just filling out a virtual app doesn't get them registered for, right. for class. So we're, we're working that. And in some cases, it's, you know, one by one phone calls. So we are doing that. So I really don't have an answer for you yet. One of the, la the things that we are really focused on in the, in the spring was making sure we fed everybody. Um, and now that the federal government has issued the EBT, are we still going to be providing meals for our all virtual kids and for not. days off? We are not. Then we don't need to, okay. No, nope, nope. we are, okay. we're following the USDA guidance and I think, um, I think most schools are not, they're not, so we will provide lunch for the students who are in person. Okay. At this time. Thank you. However, they can come to school to get lunch or that's not they, going to be an option? That, that is not. So we're working, I believe with the food bank, I don't know that we're quite ready to announce this yet, but let's see yeah, where we're we working, are. Jane's right. We're working with the food bank yeah. to see how are they going to, um, how can we support them, support our students yeah. um, in general around this time frame. We're focused, you know, obviously in the meal preparation that's going to come and the intricacies that are going to come with just preparing meals um, in the classrooms and things along those yeah. lines. It's going to take all of our staff. And so we are working with uh, the Northeast um, Food Bank to uh, help us with that. So is that everywhere? Yes. I haven't wow, talked to anybody yet, so, yep. I have not talked to anybody yet. That that guidance came from the USDA. I think that would have been a game changer if parents knew before that. Yeah. Honestly, um, mm -hmm. that's actually very disappointing because mm -hmm. a lot of families rely on food mm -hmm. regardless. Yep. And so if I have to choose between food and virtual, right. yep. <clears throat> And well, that's we're why not, we're working through. We're not saying they have I, to choose. We're just I know, saying I'm just saying, like, I that. think yep. a lot of families... Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's also a deciding factor. Like, right. I need to be able mm -hmm. to go to work and right. feed my child, right. and I don't have that option anymore. Yeah. So, 
I, I just think they, I mean, I think yeah. families knew that before. But that might have been a game changer for yeah. them. So, yeah, wow. when did we find that out? Because I, I mean, I just, the only reason I asked is because we got the cards, mm-hmm. but there wasn't yeah. really anything. I, yeah. I should have followed the USD Food, food Administration, yeah. I guess. Yeah. But when was that decided that we were not going to? I can't, provide meals then. I can't particularly fo- focus on like a date in, um, right now, but no. I, I have just to, recently. Yeah, it's not, it's not too long ago. Out, so. But I, I would say that, you know, it, we're trying to work as so it's following the same criteria that we did in the summer and also the closure period where there'll be multiple sites. And so it may look different as far as who is distributing the food, but we're trying to make it very similar to the same process that they had before. The difference may be it just may not be at our school sites, but it may be at multiple sites throughout the community. We will we'll continue to monitor that. So I think yeah. Gideon's point was yeah. that they might have make a different choice. Mm-hmm. Food provided they might have chose virtual. Virtual. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. The other way. The other way. I think she's yeah. yeah. been gone. Yeah. yeah. In person. <laughs> well. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Might be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Three to six hours. She's on it now. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> three to six hours of monitoring my student. I also have to get food. Get food. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't doing that before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. that's all. And well and of course there'll be an opportunity to at least change at the halfway point or yep. trimester point. Trimester. Too. Trimester. Yeah. Yeah. Trimester. Trimester so for elementary assistant. and semester for yeah. that well, long. It just seems like a long. It does seem like, <laughs> it seems like a very long time. Board, I was going to ask you if you don't mind, in that we are an hour and ten minutes into this conversation, and I, it's super important. And so, what I would like to ask is that, um, Dr. Lindemann, that we continue to mm-hmm. address the return to learn plan sure. in two weeks. I think we're going to have some different changes, and I yep. think all of us are probably going to hear some different things and have some more questions. Yep. So, yep. I would well, ask that'd be the first day of school. Be the first yep. day of school but, I, but I also think if there are things that come up as board members, that we right. certainly, I mean, continue. Tara, I want to just you know reiterate that we've got this website that people can. Um, the email, that pe- the email yeah. address, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say website, no, right. yep. that people can, can send information to because I think it is so complicated and and people are trying to do the best they can. So grace with everything and, and yep. if anybody has anything else burning, but I was going to say if not, then let us just know that we will continue to address these questions as they come up and make sure that we do it again in two weeks. Yep. Thank you so much. So, Okay. Well, the next item on our agenda is information from individuals and delegations, and I would ask our board secretary if anyone has submitted any comments that need to be uh, read this evening. No comments. No comments. Excellent. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, they've all put them on the on the into the. They all went to the return to learn questions. So. All right, the next item on our agenda then is the consent agenda, which consists of four items tonight the minutes of the July 13th, 2020 regular board meeting and the July 27th, 2020 special board meeting, item C, um, the personnel appointments and adjustments, which are item D, the bills due and payable and the bills paid between board meetings, which is item E, and then the Iowa voluntary preschool contracts, which is item F. So I would ask, I would entertain a motion to put those four items on the table. So So, Jesse and a second India? Yes. Yes. And then ask um, if there are any items that board members would wish to have removed. E as echo. E as an echo. Um, F, F is in Frank. Gotcha, Aster. Yeah. Okay. D is yeah. in dog. D is yeah. in dog. Sorry. All right. Anything else? So that would leave then on the consent agenda <laughs> item C. <laughs> all right. Then all those in favor of approving item C, which are the minutes of the July 13th and the 27th of 2020, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Chair votes aye. Motion carried. Then that takes us to the personnel appointments and adjustments, which is item D. And let me get to that recommended motion which is that the Board of Education approve the personnel items as listed. So moved. Thank you, Sue, and a second. Second. Thank you, Jesse, and discussion. I was just wondering, um, Kingsley, um, (laughs) as far as staffing for um, the current situation, 
you know, I look on here and I see like the pre-K teachers and um, like three of those. So are we basing that on what numbers or just staff place replacements that were replacing people or since we don't have specific numbers how are we determining where we need specific teachers now so, so prior to the end of last school year we we took the number as far as kind of the rolling from each grade level to move forward now we know we don't have pre-k and so you're correct we're just looking at the replacement to that extent and so all these positions are replacement positions there aren't new positions that we're adding Staffing-wise, how are we, um, I guess, any voids, special ed um, looking good, and just just overall general synopsis? Yeah, I mean, I would say the three areas that are of concern right now um, are still special education, just because I'd like to be fully staffed. I mean, right now, we're, we're still around that 10 number as far as open positions, but again, compared to last year, we were around 2022. Um, we've made some huge strides. There's still people trickling in, and we haven't even switched to what I would call you know, Plan D, which is really kind of um, doing a crawl of all the applicants that were um, necessarily get positions and seeing whether or not they would be willing to get an executive decision license for a year to provide that level of instruction. Counseling is hanging out there as far as uh, something that I'd like to clean up with this week. As far as uh, a neat area, we had some counselors move around and so just worrying about you know finding that suitable replacement to make sure that we can um, truly find and have good counselors at each of the different levels because I think there's some vacancies at elementary, middle school, and high school. And there's just a couple of just little things from a secondary standpoint, a couple of positions hanging out there. Now, obviously, as we get our, our online numbers, I'm feeling less worried about that as far as what we can provide, but there's still some concerns. But we're doing, I mean, Lorene has done an amazing job um, working with the principals, principals have been engaged. I mean, this was a tumultuous summer, um, but it was, uh, it definitely bared some fruits. Thank you. So at the high school level, are we employing the same number of teachers with half size classes? Is that the plan? Some will be teaching, some will be shifted to be teaching or virtual because we have about the same number of students. Correct. We anticipate we will have about the same number of students. <laughs> but we're hiring this Edgenuity to present the online, aren't we? Uh, just yes, the, content, the content, but not the, the teachers. So we will be, put, yep. Yeah, I guess, so uh, Dr. Like Lindemann mentioned that a little bit, you know, while the online uh, engine, Ingenuity. Ingenuity. I would say ingenuity. Ingenuity um, <laughs> is going to be important. One of the key components that I know we received a lot of feedback is how are we going to have contact with an actual content specific teacher, especially at the secondary level. And so we're going to spend, as Jane talked about, the next 48 hours mm -hmm. moving a ton of staff around. And <clears throat> as we were sitting there, I also just looked at our recent guidance from our principal PD. They're aware of this as well, and they have a heightened sense about what this is going to look like. And so we will be pulling teachers to make sure that we have Books that can provide that um, contact from a content level standpoint, but also make sure that we have um, obviously the courses that the being taught in person as well. Is there a preference um, for those staff who might have medical concerns being able to teach? There is, and so we've been starting those conversations in earnest, and I think at least really we talked to them about not having a, a virtual option at this particular mm -hmm. time. But now that we are. Now that we are incorporating and working on more guidelines as far as what that will look like, we're gonna switch gears almost uh, in the next, mm -hmm. in right now, like literally after we get done with this meeting in the next five or six hours to talk about, have those meetings throughout the week, make sure that we are giving preference for uh, individuals that have um, some type of a medical, need some type of medical accommodation. So at this point we don't have uh, uh, the staff partitioned into virtual and no, we do not. In person. No, we not do not. at this point. We just wanted to make sure we had the number. I mean, we could have made some changes and guessed, and then it would just, mm -hmm. from a staffing standpoint, caused a huge uproar. Mm -hmm. It was necessary to really get the true numbers that we were working with. And then, and I just talked to um, my Cedar Falls counterpart, Adrian. Uh, he's doing the same thing right now. They're, we're in the same boat as far as making these determinations. And so he was, we were joking about, you know, whoever gets out of this next two weeks um, with uh, less gray hair is going to be interesting. So, so, you meant at the meeting first. No. <laughs> so we don't anticipate 
uh, uh, overall change in student-teacher ratio? We do anticipate, that's a great question, we do anticipate some um, change in the student-teacher ratio, and we were just talking about that today. We're developing or we're working through finalizing our criteria around what that looks like because from a health and safety standpoint, we're also thinking if we're having 30 to 35 kids in the classroom, that's problematic. If we get our numbers around 20, 20 to 25, that makes it more feasible to spread out and, and do some of the things that we've been using part of our return to learn protocol. I so think, stay tuned on that once yeah. give us really give us 48 more hours to to start because we're actually we actually have a little um chart where it has every building every grade and so how many kids are enrolled how many kids are taking virtual how many kids are there how many teachers are there dividing it out what are the class sizes looking looking like and then where can we we're, we're going to need to pull teachers here and there to, to have them be a virtual teacher right. so that's in coming. theory there's a shift from secondary to elementary yes Yes, and so we'll be looking at it at, the, and actually, there's even within elementary, there's a shift at the kindergarten K two versus three five. So we we will be going class, but grade by class, grade by grade. We have and, a lot of work to do. And uh, the staff, there's enough staff that are certified to. That's what we're working through right now. Change. So, yeah, we're we're 48 making. Forty eight hours. <laughs> Give us forty eight hours. Because <laughs> it could end up being that a teacher would have more students than they would if they right. would have had an everyday classroom in yeah. person. It, I mean, well, yeah, I, and the face to face, we have a little more wiggle room in high school since they're going to be rotating. So class size mm -hmm. isn't quite as yep. much of an issue. Yep. Um, do you need to have additional support, support staff? other than just a classroom teacher for your virtual. I know that you were going like through IEPs and 504s and if some are, are approved, are we going to provide any kind of service like that? Give us 48 hours. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Give us a little bit of time. So yeah, there, we're, gonna, we're gonna have to provide support where support is needed, but I don't yet know what that will look like. Um, do you have enough custodial staff for all your disinfection kind of stuff that we're going to need? Uh, right now we do. I think we are still looking at um, hiring an additional couple of flex or permanent custodians to mm -hmm. help support as needed. And, and that's just because we are planning for the potential for it worked a little bit better during the closure period if we had to shut down um, a particular building for two weeks, um, then we, you know, we would do that. But if this was... Um, now that we're in the school year, we won't be able to shut down a building as far as being cleaned, and so we'll make sure that uh, we have those staff ready. Because they're going to be disinfecting the the, the the sneeze guards and all that stuff at night, correct? And then, I'm sorry, one last question. Your, um, the uh, administrative support positions, can you just, um, the, the one behavior coach, is that somebody um, who rotates since they're under administrative support and the jobs or job skills trainer, are those ones that rotate or do they stay there? Yes, great question. So the job skills trainer is a part of what I talked about before with the project search uh, change or turnover, not change, but not turnover, but change within that particular contract. That will come before you. We're working with IBR right now to get that information um, to us. They have the contract. They need to get it to us. And I've stated to them we need that immediately. Um, and I put my, my Lyle fist down as far as making sure that happened. Um, but for the other position with the behavior coach, um, that is actually building specific positions. So it's at East that that position will reside. And then one more 48-hour question, I suppose, is uh, is – uh, on the subs for either virtual or in person, how how's that looking? Uh, I know yeah. it's hard to predict how many we're going to need, but the more the better. We are we are working pretty ferociously, um, my, myself, Lydia, and Corey, as far as using the guidance that, or using the proclamation that the governor gave us to really put a lot of people through um, that system. Now we have initially focused just on internal people, um, but as we get a little bit closer to the school year, and I don't see my numbers pick up as much as I would like, I'm gonna start reaching out to the community and saying, hey, those that have BAs, those that have AAs, we're willing to pay for you to get this particular certification um, to help us out in the schools. And so we don't have any particular number right now. I think there's been some subs that have shared some concerns Concerns about you know what health and safety looks like and I think we had a good conversation with them because we did have an initial kind of orientation or comeback meeting and there were some concerns there were some things that I think are going to change um, that are good just in general as far as making sure that they're more aware of the seating charts and everything else that they've been talking about for years now wanting that information um, but right now we're solid as far as a virtual component that's tough you know I really are we're focused on having the 
the subs for the in-person instruction. Uh, we'd have to walk through what that would look like and whether or not it could be potentially shared with individuals that are already participating in uh, virtual learning. So we'll let you know in 48 hours. Is Just there, one question there, about. Is there pay competitive? Yes, so we looked at it each time. It's it's very competitive now. Again, I know Cedar Falls does something differently. After 15 days, it go up to like $200. But again, we pay consistently with, you know, in the area as far as 150 being that high note. I, I don't think we need to make another jump this year as we had done in previous years. Okay. Just quickly, just um, I know this is not um, our human resources, but just making sure that we are okay in the areas of nurses in all the schools. I just want to reiterate that to families. Yeah, we are. I mean, and we really have done a wonderful job. Um, Karen Meacham, the really in charge of the program with Unity Point, um, Marla Paget, Director Paget, all the work that she's done. We feel really confident, and actually, we use some of the protocols that we have for nurses and what our staff are going to be using as far as sending kiddos down to the uh, down to the nurses uh, nurses health office I can remember the name um, so I'm super confident as far as where we're at right there we actually added some technology implications as well to help our health assistants really talk with a uh, engage with a traveling nurse as well to make sure that we're doing what we can for our kids having a, a okay. sub for your virtual actually would be kind of cool because you know we were talking about reaching out to maybe some retirees and they don't want to have to risk medical you know being with so that be a cool way to advertise that yeah, maybe Thank you, Kingsley. All right, 48 hours. I'm expecting a full report. <laughs> just kidding. Just, just kidding. On that note, I'm going to throw out you're 72. Gonna right. I'm yeah. going to go 72 out. Right. You're gonna, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just, if, we could, if we could get you out of here, you could get back to work. Okay. All right. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all those in favor then of approving the personnel appointments and adjustments, please signify by saying aye. 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 And those opposed, same sign. Chair votes aye, motion carried. That takes us to our next item, which is bills due and payable and bills paid between board meetings. And the recommended motion is the Board of Education approve the bills due and payable and the bills paid between board meetings. So moved. Thank you, Sue, and a second? Second. second. I pulled, I'm, I'm just need yep. to abstain on this one here. That's so. fine, so Jesse will be abstaining. All right, anything else on that? Then I would um, ask all those in favor of approval, please signify by saying aye. aye. I'm sorry, aye. I didn't. I wasn't. I wasn't ready to vote. I didn't. I thought you were just asking his question. Okay. I'm Never sorry. Mind. Just um, the Blackboard Inc. Is that how we use our mass emails and texts? Is that what that is? There was a payment for twenty-four thousand dollars to Blackboard Inc. Is that what that? It's part of Infinite Campus, I think. Oh, is it? I think, but uh, Mark. Is that Blackboard Connect? Yep. Okay, thank you. Sure. Okay, I didn't mean to cut that off. Astra, did you have questions? I did not. Okay. All right. Come on, I know you do on the next one, so hang on. I'm not there quite yet. All right, everybody good? Are we? Anybody else have any questions? I on? did. Okay. That um, The program that we're using, Edun... Edu 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 Edunuity. Let's say that 10 times. Edunuity. Okay, um, the price that we pay... Um, is that a yearly fee or one every year? Yeah, it's a, it's a yearly fee, and I think at the high school, it's a, we, we do a three-year, um, because we use it for PDA and have some right. time, and so we negotiate a multi-year contract because it's cheaper to use, like, so Sorry, we, we negotiate at the high school a multi-year contract because it's cheaper to do so, but at the elementary level, we've just negotiated a one-year contract. So what this cycle would be the one year contract that we're paying right here? In this um, I'm not exactly okay. sure what this piece is for. Uh, oh, August 4th. So I'm assuming it might be for elementary. It, it, it could be. Did that I'm serve, not. is that just an overall kindergarten rate? It's a district rate. District rate, excuse me. Okay, all right, thank you. Sorry. No, nope. good now. question, that's fine. Questions on uh, bills due and payable? Bills paid? All right, then all those in favor of approval, please signify by saying aye. 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 And those in abstention? Aye. And those opposed? Chair votes aye. Motion carried with one abstention. 
That takes us to our next item, which is item F. This is the Iowa Voluntary Preschool Contracts, and the recommended motion is that the Board of Education approve the Iowa Voluntary Preschool Contracts for 2020-2021. So moved. Thank you, Jesse. And a second? Second. Thank Thanks. You. All right. And Aster, I know you pulled this, so you go ahead. You get the first question. Um, I just wanted a little explanation on the reimbursement process that was stated and the partnership or connections with the Cedar Valley Catholic Schools. Are those sites used because of the, the spaces? Um, just, a little, just a little bit more information on that. Sounds good. I would have to turn that over to someone else to answer. So um, I may actually have to get back with you on that, Astor. I think those are very, very valid questions, and I am not exactly sure. Dr. Mohorn, any chance you know? I don't get the answer. Okay. I yeah. don't approve it. It's, it's, yep. it's not necessarily confusing, but just for the public, just a little bit more information on it. If, they, if somebody looks yeah. at because um, there's quite a bit of uh, reimbursement funds, um, and it's over half of the funds that are going out. Yep. So I, I believe I'm going to take a stab, and then I'm going to commit to the uh, getting you a first short answer. So I believe this is regulated by the way pre-K funding comes to us. So like many other things, we public uh, private schools get funded and that money comes to us and then they they expend it through us so we are very very often the uh, fiscal agents for the private schools um, on many of things so some sometimes people will you know not think that the public dollars go to the private schools but there's actually quite a few things that are flow through for us and so i believe and i don't know if you're talking about like for example on page 66 the emmanuel lutheran preschool contract so on c um to to c it says the understanding that waterloo schools will reimburse up to three thousand three hundred forty eight dollars per contract student so that is dollars that is comes to us and then we pass that along so um, am I close? You are, and that happens yes. for, for pre-K, it happens for Title I, it yep. happens for what's called the equitable share. Mm -hmm. Equitable that share. We so. get, that we have to go yes. out to the private school. That's yes. just yep. state legislated that we have to do that. Same thing happened with the CARES dollars. It Correct. comes to us. And, and that's with every contract. Every, so every contract. So every contract is 33 yep. Yep. So I, I believe yep. that that reimbursement um, for private schools, and again, it happens with a lot of things. So. And that is for voluntary pre-K. I think that's why it yep. comes through. We are the pastor. Yep. Yep. But so then that money, um, that's what we give them, but they are still able to charge what they want, or are we expecting them that that pays for that child? Voluntary pre-K by state law is free. Yep. So they, yeah, can't nobody charge. charges for that. So, okay. Yep. Nope. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Private or, or public, that is a free, free service. Do we choose the schools that, or preschools that we are involved with? I know there's six, but let's say there is a daycare who would be interested. Mm -hmm. Do they submit an application or how does it work? Yep. We have a process. We, we are continually in com conversation. So sometimes somebody will be, they'll have a partnership with us. Sometimes they won't. Mm -hmm. um, so they can have conversations with us. Sometimes they'll have it with us for a while and then they'll stop. Okay. doing that we've had a couple over over the years that have stopped offering preschool so that contract ceases mm -hmm. and so um yeah we so. can we have conversations about that okay thank you there's six choices so i think that's yeah good. plus all oh. of our yeah preschool plus all our, so plus our, our, mm -hmm. yeah and i and i, didn't, I couldn't hear I, I didn't know if somebody asked, asked this question how are those six places determined is it just the, the building locations, or how, how are those six places determined? Yeah. India just answered that question, or just asked that question. I, I asked her, no, I know you can hear, but, but I, I, can't, I can't really hear. I can't really hear India and, and the ends, Lyle and India. And, the ends. So you and, just hear my hear fat mouth and Jane. Yes. Yes. So I got you. <laughs> there's yes. an application mm -hmm. process, um, af, um, Aster, that happens no. for people for preschools that are interested in being part of it. Yep, there's a conversation that's held, and so they can. Um, I, I'm not exactly sure. There's actually a couple of organizations in the Cedar Valley that actually have conversations with preschools and we come together multiple times. And so it's a pretty collaborative effort. So sometimes people are added 
at their desire and sometimes they are not. There's even a couple preschools where they don't have a certified teacher, so we provide the itinerant teacher, so their reimbursement rate is a little bit different because we actually hire the teacher, so they get less per child because we're hiring the teacher, so that's an itinerant teacher. Okay, got it. And so we pay. Right, thank you. The, You're welcome. With the Iowa Voluntary Preschool, and I'm sorry, I need to look it up, but what that means is that nobody has to pay for preschool is that what that means so anyone who goes it's not like they're having to pick and choose kids because you kind of explained that to me last time with the other one so it's just everybody yep voluntary pre-k is open to anybody there are no financial guide guidelines that like 100 percent poverty 200 percent poverty so there's no financial guidelines um the only guidelines are space availability Okay. So if a district didn't have enough room for them, then there would be a waiting list and so, but we, we really don't, we've worked really hard to add programs as we can. So I don't think our, we can usually get everybody in. So I don't think there's been a waiting list for a long time. There, what, there used to be. Wish they had that when I had little yes, kids. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Super. So that's awesome, thank you. All right, anything else, Aster, you set? Yes, nope. I am. Okay, great. All right, then all those in favor of approving the Iowa Voluntary Preschool contracts, please signify by saying aye. 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 And those opposed, same sign. Sorry, Esther. Chair votes aye, motion carried. That takes us then to item G, and the recommended motion here is that the Board of Education approve the resolution supporting the proposed... Am I not? Am I not? It's H again. It's H again? Wait a minute. No, a G is a new one. Resolute, that's a number nine. It's not in the consent agenda. No, eight, no, H is the new one. 93A is the new one. This is on page. Yeah, I'm on my revised agenda. You are, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm on item G, okay. which is on page 91, and then we have item H, which is on 93A, and then we have item I. So item G is... What I was just starting, which is the Board of Education approved the resolution supporting the proposed issuance of approximately $25,000 school infrastructure sales service and use tax revenue bonds series 2020. Uh, 25 million. Oh, I said 25,000. 25 million. There we go. <laughs> I wish we could build the school for 25,000. Second. Thank you, India and. Um, Stacy, appreciate that. All right, and then I can turn this over to uh, Michael Coughlin, who is on the phone here to talk a little bit more about this. Okay, can you hear me all right? Yep. Yep, we okay. can. Okay. Uh, it is, um, this is the preliminary action by the board to start the process of the official uh, bid process to put out the bonds and take the bids and as you've seen the calendar earlier um, they're not sold until September and it's not closed until October uh, but this is just to get the process started uh, with Piper who has been helping us that um, the contract for it, that to actually happen is coming up in a couple of items here but we have wor been working with them for several months is the timing of the Lolo project um, to get that started and we are able to um, financially handle the bills until uh, the bonding comes through but this is just the first step you're not approving the sale yet you're just approving that the process starts and the uh, the uh, bidders are contacted with all the information about the district and who wants to bid on the bonds. Questions for Michael? I do have a quick question. Yeah. Um, I've seen this twice in the agenda. Could you just kind of explain what it says the debt will be repaid from either saved tax collections or from the issuance of the bonds in the future? What exactly does, how do you determine which one will be used? Michael, can you hear that? No, would you repeat the question, please? Yes, India is curious about how the bond would be the, she's seen it a couple times in the agenda that the repayment would be either through save funds or through um, the, the sale of the bonds. And how do you determine which way they will be paid back? Is that right? 
the the payment of the bonds will be paid back by saved dollars regardless of whether we already have uh, funds on hand or whether it's of new funds coming in. So it does not mix with any other funding source. It's just saying that um, some of the payments could be made by the resources we already have on hand. We have about 13 million in that fund right now, um, but there are other issues that are uh, in the works, but it has to be stated that way by legal description um, to make sure that we're covered on both parts. So just for instance, um, if we don't, if the bonds don't close until October and we get the money, we have bills to pay before that. So it's coming out of money that we already have, um, but it will get credited back to that um, bond revenue in uh, the next item H, but it is saying that when the actual payments are made, it could be by the revenue we get from the actual bond or revenue from the save fund that we already have on hand that we can use to pay the bills in the meantime before the bond is sold. Got it. Got it's it. Thank you. Money. It's not has nothing to do with property tax, uh, changing anything with that. It's all saved dollars from the one cent penny um, sales tax. Thank you. Thank you. We got it. Anything else for Michael? Well, he's going to stay on because we got we do have more. So, all right. Then for item G, then anybody, uh, all those in favor of approving the resolution to support the issuance of the $25 million of school infrastructure sale and service tax revenue bonds, please signify by saying aye. 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 And those opposed, same sign. Chair votes aye, motion carried. The next item on our agenda then is 93A. Uh, we're, this is an addendum here to 93H. And the recommended motion is that the Board of Education approve the resolution supporting the proposed issuance. Oh, I'm sorry, that's the same one. That the Board of approve the resolution declaring an official intent under Treasury Regulation 1.150-2 to issue debt to reimburse the school district for certain original expenditures paid in connection with specified projects as presented. So moved. Thanks, Sue. And a second? Second. Thank you, India. And discussion. Again, Michael, if you would like to give us a little background on this uh, $25 million yeah, so sale. This is, this is really just a resolution that deals with the timing of the selling of the bond and when the project started. So as you're very well aware, the Lowell has been demolished and they are uh, underway of getting the new building started. Um, so we have a couple of uh, months upon us of bills from contractors and we will not get um, the bond proceeds until October. So as this rule allows us, this resolution is we can declare that when we get the proceeds from the bond that we can go back 60 days prior to tonight and take any bills that we have paid and we can apply them to the revenue that we got from this $25 million bond issue. So it's a timing issue to say we're a little ahead of the revenue with the actual work, but this uh, resolution, this treasury regulation allows us to then step back and pay prior bills out of um, the bond proceeds when they are received in October. So, Michael, was there a lot spent prior to 60 days? No, there are just a few um, attorney fees, but I will, I'll give you a whole layout of what that difference was. We're, we're capturing uh, most of it with the 60-day window before today. Okay. 
That's fine. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else for Michael? All right, then seeing none, all those in favor of approving, oh, this has to be a roll call, does it not, Pam? Yes, this is a roll call vote. So um, all those in favor of approval, India Johnson? Yes. Jesse Knight? Yes. Sue Flynn? Yes. Stacy Mills? Yes. Aster Williams? Yes. Lyle Schmidt? Yes. Shanley McNally? Yes. Motion carried. Thanks. Pardon me? I did. Yep. All right. Thank you. The next item on our agenda then is a financial services agreement. This is item I. And the recommended motion here is that the Board of Education approve architectural services with Envision Architects of Waterloo, Iowa for the Central Middle School Remodel Project. So moved. Thank you, India. And a second? I think you went ahead. You need to do the other 93. Financial service yep. I did that one, 93A, the resolution. No, we did 94. We did G, we did. 90, the next one, I just made Oh, good grief. Okay. You're okay. Wow, I am really knocking it out of the park it's a tonight. Woohoo! Yep. Yeehaw! Let me see what I could get to. Here we go. All right, the Board of Education. The recommended motion is that the Board of Education approve the financial services agreement with Piper Sandler of Des Moines for the Lowell Elementary Construction Project. So moved. Thank you, Jesse. And a second from Sue. Boy, I am just. Whew. And discussion. Did you, Michael, did you think that um, it was a competitive um, bid? Um, Sue, we have not used a competitive bid on this for over 10 years. Um, it is like, uh, it is very similar to uh, selecting an attorney or an architect. It's by choice and by uh, working relationship. Uh, we have been working with Piper Jaffrey, who is now uh, combined with Sadler, so they're now Piper Sadler, but it's the same company and the same representatives that we have been working with for uh, 10 years or so. Um, but this uh, issue that we're bringing this to the board for approval is really a change in the SAVE law. Um, there was some changes in the legislation. Um, you know, you heard, have heard some things about whether you're building a athletic facility, is that still, that was kind of a contention with the legislature this year. But with um, those discussions about how SAVE money was used, uh, they tightened up some of the procedures of how save money um, is notified to the public and with the loans, the bonds. Um, uh, before this, a few years ago, we didn't have to have a hearing to present this that we were going to sell save bonds. We just put it on the agenda and published it in the paper, but we didn't have to have an actual hearing. Well, they've just tightened it up a little bit to make sure everybody knows exactly what's going on, and that's fine. Um, but this is also another one of those steps of saying the financial advisors that you hire to uh, assist the district with the calculations and the options and, uh, and um, setting up the sale and evaluating the bids and so on, the things that you've seen in that contract uh, following the like week 95 and on, it, it's just a public disclosure to say this is the kind of services you're getting and these are uh, the representatives that are doing it and it's just something that is now required in open session for the board to approve um, rather than just uh, picking the services like we have uh, in the past, like we've done with other professional services like attorneys. So this is just, a, uh, it's not a competitive bid. Putting this out, there's only a few people in the state that do this, um, and this is a company that we have 
uh, in the past done some comparatives of what people charge and there's not a lot of difference um, but it's really more of a comfort factor of the people that we work with and know that we are getting well served and good information and timely information um, that we can um, go through a public sale like this and feel like we are honoring the public's uh, responsibility of taking care of uh, how we uh, handle a, a major a major funding source like this with a 25 million dollar bond issue it's uh, um, it's complicated uh, we have uh, bond attorneys Ehlers law firm which we don't have to do a, a public um, approval of a contract because they still fall under the legal fees but for a financial advisor such as Piper we they are now requiring that we do that Thank you. That's good to know. I was not aware that the legislation changed, so I appreciate that. Anything further then on that? All right, then seeing none, this is the financial services agreement. All those in favor of approval, please signify by saying aye. 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 Astor, did I hear you? Yeah, aye. Aye, okay, great. And chair votes aye, motion carried. And now I will take us to the architectural services. Sorry about that, you all. Um, and that recommended motion is that the Board of Education approve architectural services with Envision Architects of Waterloo, Iowa for the Central Middle School Remodel Project. So moved. Thank you, Jesse. And a second? Second. Thank you, Sue. And before I turn it over, I don't know if uh, Michael or Jane wants to speak, but but this is sort of the, the next step for us as we talk about Lowell. Um, I think our central family has been very patient. Mm -hmm. And um, when we started the Waterloo Career Center project, you know, three, this, the phases of it, this is sort of the next phase in line. We've done the Career Center piece. Now it's time to come back to the original um, school, which was built as a high school in 1972. Um, needs a little TLC and so this is the the embarking on looking into that project to take care of about 50% of the building which remains it, so it was the next phase in line and it got bumped right because right that's what I'm saying it yeah. they've been but we they have been that, patient we they have been patient <laughs> and it was just a little unexpected exactly just a little glitch so now we're getting back to that and so um, that's what this is about tonight so I'll turn it over to Dr. Lindemann sorry I didn't mean to yeah. nope I really actually don't have a lot more the other than that so okay. tonight um, this is not approving the expenditure of you know we're not building anything we're not we're this is a, an approval of the pros project um, asking for us to be able to go forward and, and um, look at the cost, look at the feasibility, look at what it would look like, what how much is involved in that. And so um, there is a, you know, there's a section in the exhibit itself that just talks about the fact that we've remodeled approximately 50% of the building. And so this is kind of the other half. This is the south half of Central Middle School. And so um, the architects will be exploring um you know what it costs what it could look like um you know whether it can be a live-in remodel whether it cannot be a live-in remodel and so they are really looking at that and will come back to us with um suggestions Good. so that's that's really what this is and just to put that out there i think time frame wise um i know the i'm not on the facilities committee but the mm -hmm. facilities committee will be working through this with our architects and hopefully by the end of the year or so by yeah, December. They can come back with December our of 2020 ish. Right. We will have um, some more recommendations for the board to look for. And that would be the point when the board would be asked to approve yeah. the project. And, and that's when yeah. cost, yeah. et cetera. Right. Okay. Did yes. we say December? I thought we pushed it back to January, Lyle. But do you think that would give them enough time? I think that we talked about bringing it before the board so their, their findings could come back to the facilities committee by December of 2020. You're, you're exactly right. We did talk about okay. January. So I think, you know, we're asking them to kind of look at it, but I think Brad's here. I think he said, nod your head. Did we say January? We said, yeah. January, take, I don't yeah. mean to give there's, anybody heartburn. December, January. But there's yeah. a process steps in order to get to that too. Right? There are, yep. Yeah. So they're, they've hearings. just got some work to do and they're gonna. That was the potential bid date, wasn't it? January. January. Yeah. 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 Perhaps can we ask Brad Leeper from Envision Architecture to come to the microphone? Thanks, Brad. I appreciate it. It's hard. 
Make sure that little green button is on and you can, we can all hear you. It's on. Yay. Uh, I'll answer any questions you have as long as they're related to bonds. I can't, I'm not selling bonds, right? So uh, thank you. Red, I know, I tried, to, I tried to give you that option, but. Yeah. Gold or silver, do you have either? <laughs> I think what, Bitcoin, what, he's, um, what he's talking about is we had talked about a potential, obviously we're not deciding anything, but we had talked about, you know, if we move forward then, and the, of course only the board can vote on that, so that's not a suggestion, but we, we had asked them to give us some potential timelines. So when Lyle's referencing that, he's looking at, he's referencing a, yeah. One plausible timeline that we looked yeah, at. Yeah, one plausible time was, uh, you know, the aggressive version, which we want to take advantage of the market, was to try and get something bid, you know, maybe in February, uh, have drawings okay. done at the end of January. If it's affordable. Uh, but Great. I think we'll have some interim updates um, okay. for, for you all and the facilities committee before then. So I would guess that's going to happen um, probably in the next couple months, um, hopefully. Uh, we'd have some interim steps. We wouldn't be finished with drawings, but we'd have some interim steps okay. understanding the scope. Uh, of the project a little bit better than we do right now. Good. So if indeed it did come to fruition that in February 2020 and we would not start anything this school year, correct? Like 21 spring for the fact that these students and staff are already going through so much change, we're not going to potentially displace them in the spring of 2021. Uh, that's correct. Okay. Perfect. They would not be displaced. Okay. And that all remains to be seen. <laughs> yeah, we got some work to do. Right. But 48 no, it, hours, 48 hours, that's all you get. <laughs> uh, the earliest things would happen would probably be the summer. No, that's what I wanted reassurance yeah. of because yeah. just of all the changes going on right, right now, that just yep. seems... You guys have a few things going on? Yeah. yeah. Yes, just a few. Yeah, but. And we've got a couple older buildings, but I don't know if you noted it. You know, it's coming on 50 years since it was built and there's been nothing, nothing done to it. It's uh, not energy efficient at all, so there should be substantial improvement in that. So there's, uh, I think there's pretty good reasons why this is our next project. Uh, like I say, we've got a couple older buildings, but only a couple now at this point. Uh, everything else has been remodeled or or uh, or uh, built new. So well, so we'll look forward to seeing you back December, January, somewhere in that neck of the woods. If not yeah, before, assuming you not before. It, assuming they well, do. right. That, I was going to say before the vote. Hang on, don't go anywhere. So, they, thank you. I appreciate it. So, all right. Then, all those in favor of approving um, the architectural services with Envision Architects, please signify by saying aye. 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 And those opposed, same sign. Chair votes aye. Motion carried. Okay. Now we'll see you. Now we'll see. Now you. we'll yes. see you. So, <laughs> all right. Just don't leave anything to me tonight. I'm kind of off my game. Woo. So, all right. The next item on our agenda then is Exhibit J. Um, these are our board policy changes. This is our second reading tonight. Um, and so the recommended motion is that the board approve the following policies. The board organizational meeting, board member qualifications, vacancies, meetings of the Board of Education, meeting notice, quorum, weighted grades, internet and computer network appropriate use and safety and unmanned drones am i doing it wrong again okay. we're on j okay yep sorry i have it on two different things it's i apologize so yep this is item k which is the board policy changes so all right so can i get a motion to place those items on the table so moved thank you stacy in a second second, second. India? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, <whichever>. India? <laughs> All right, I'm giving it to India. And with that, I welcome Tara Thomas. Thank you. Happy to entertain questions? any questions or feedback. I just note that 202 stays the same. No direct oh, compensation. Yeah, why did they change that loud? It's but all that's, your fault. But that's, I think that's the best policy, otherwise it's... <laughs> People can have uh, a lot of criticism if it was anything other than that. Right. <laughs> Tara, this is Sue, and you know that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I can see you. That's what, you know what, that's, that's that comes from, from virtual. <laughs> from virtual, we yeah. announce ourselves, right. and so see, <laughs> you've already created We're a habit. We're getting punchy. <laughs> We're so used to Zoom saying, hi, this is Jane. <laughs> that's great. That's awesome. Okay. 
Um, on the unmanned aircraft drones, can you give us a little history of why that is? And then also I wondered as far as like if we wanted to use it for a photography piece or something, is, is that allowed? Great question. So it's no surprise that the proliferation of drones has reached our campus in terms of requests to both shoot, shoot being the terminology for capturing video, so using drones to shoot video over our campuses and request to do so. So this was something that Marty Metcalf with facilities and others talked about being necessary. We do get requests and we take it on a case by case basis. So for example, for commercial purposes, Amy Wienens has been a huge promoter of Waterloo, specifically our district. So we have green lighted aerial shots to be captured, but not when kids or adults are on the property being staff or students. However, obviously again, with Dr. Lindemann or the board's consent, there might be exceptions. For example, if somebody said, hey, we want to shoot an aerial shot of the East-West football game over Memorial Stadium, we would consider that if approved a public domain scenario whereby it would be no different than if I were shooting a live stream on my phone that could be captured at any time. So it's really open wide now with drones and other opportunities to capture video more lenient than what we would have been maybe even five years ago but this policy gives us some oversight to tell somebody when they've requested can i get aerial footage of kids on the playground because my child attends that school for example no we're not per that's not permissible so it's kind of helping both promote publicity options and also give some parameters for what would be prohibited and if someone did this and then let's say posted it, would it be just like using our W trademark or something the same? Exactly. Legal? We would contact individuals if it were, if we were unaware and it were brought to our attention, we would contact the individual and ask that it be removed from public view. We did have a situation with the Lowell demolition whereby some, a drone request was actually something that we then funneled through the contractor. And that was approved if the contractor did so because at that time we obviously didn't have students or staff on that property Thank you. so in a related question whenever we publish on our own pictures of students do we get do we get uh, do I have to sign off on that every year there is a media option for each child to be checked by the parent or guardian who registers him or her and it's either all in or all out. So for example, if you want your child to have his or her name shared in say an honor roll situation, then you're also permitting any likeness, which would be both photography, still or video. And it's been exciting that our district only has such a small percentage in that pool of no media. So when we do get a lot of publicity options by way of local reporters and journalists requests, we're so flexible with allowing many of our children and our staff to be showcased that outlets like the courier call us first because we have a very accommodating policy and many of our families are excited about the opportunity for their child to be showcased in whatever capacity the coverage entails. But we do have to check every time to make sure. Yes, there is a list on file in each building's front office and we ask that list to be pulled and cross-referenced with the children that would be a part of said shoot or media engagement. And I would and, tell oh, you that that is, that is very well known. Like the, the, the teacher will know because if I'm okay. in there and I'm taking a picture, it's not uncommon at all if there happens to be a child who has opted out yeah. that they would say to me, you need to avoid you know shoot this way and they may not even tell me who it is but they may say you need to go this way and they will they will tell me that and i would say that happens <clears throat> more than you would think we don't have a lot but they're very aware of that and they make sure that i t i know so and i would echo that too as, yeah, a, as someone who has come to deliver a check at times yes. and the pictures when i've said can i take a picture of this for my funders and definitely the staff knows exactly which students can and can't be in photos. And so it's, it's, no big deal. it's no big deal. No, you just, and you may observe before my time, this was instituted, which I think was whomever had the foresight was right on target with how things would evolve in terms of 
smartphone technology and video capability uh, outside of all of our facilities where there's a public gathering. So for example, our gyms, there is a posted warning and or edict, you can and will be photographed if you are a part of entering into said auditorium for an assembly for a sporting event. And that really is status quo now, but years, you know, a few years back, that was something where people would have been upset if they had a crowd shot appearing on somebody's social media feed, but in the world we live in today, it's accepted behavior. Thank you. Uh, Tara, can we look at 504.22 real quick? Sure. Um, so, you know, we just took out the part about when things were going to be changed with the weighting of grades, um, starting with this year's freshman class, correct? Is that? The high school. No, 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 I'm sorry, the 2014. Okay, there we go. So those are all, those have been in effect now for how many years? Okay. But a lot of kids, you know, just, if you're on just the 4.0 grade policy, that's still in effect is, you know, I just want people to understand that's still in effect across the board. If you're not doing an AP or IB class, correct? Yeah. So this policy just speaks to the weighted grades, but is it, so is it considered weighted though, the way we do 4.0 now, because pluses and minuses count? I don't have that answer, but Dr. Mohorn, being in Ed Services May, I don't know enough about how we, the nuances of if the it's weighted grades. Covered, it's okay. I Pluses can and it. minuses aren't considered weighted, so it's really by course. So if it's an advanced course, then it's worth 5.0 if it's a college bearing. So that's that. the plus and minus isn't considered weighted. That's actually on the four-point scale. Did that answer your question? Oh, so the four-point scale has just changed over time, um, there's, right? No, so if it's a if it's a, a, a weighted class, like an advanced level class, mm -hmm. a, an A is worth five points on your right. GPA. So it the plus and minus, so it's five, and then it's 4.67, and then it's 4.33, and then 4.0. So it's just one point higher for a weighted, but the pluses and minuses still are always there on weighted or non-weighted. Right, so like if your child gets a, an A minus, they're not gonna have a 4.0, they're gonna have like a 3.9 something, right? Unless it's a weighted class right. and then it would be right. one point higher. But if it's, I'm just talking about normal kiddos. Yep. Okay. Yep. Thank you. And just Thank checking you. with the- Wait, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say normal. Cause everybody- I think you meant I've, normal classes. Thank right? you. Regular classes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but with Every the child. computer um, and, and do we need anything with the new not ingenuity, ingenuity? Ingenuity. Do we need anything? Are we on 604.2? Well, I just was, re yeah, the 604.2. You know, obviously we have the parents who wish to prevent their student from accessing online tools. So obviously they could not, if they sign up for that, they could not do online. Right. So, um, but just, I just wondered if we needed anything in there about that. So Matt O'Brien reviewed and brought forth this policy change to reflect the changes with virtual, okay. and that's where they dropped the ages down to include students now, all students, getting issued the email address, whereas prior, I think it was beginning only with third grade. Mm -hmm. Second? Okay, second grade. Right, because it says here second. All right, anything further on um, the policy changes? Then seeing none, all those in favor of approving the second reading of the policy changes, item K, please signify by saying aye. 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 And those opposed, same sign. Chair votes aye. Motion carried. Thank you very much, Tara. Thanks. So the next item on our agenda, um, actually the superintendent, Dr. Lindemann's already given her report tonight uh, in the return to learn. And so I will move on to our board members and I'm gonna start down here to my left with India. I'm gonna put Ms. Stephanie on a spot for a moment. Could you just kind of give us an update about Jumpstart and busing and how all that has gone? Um, it's been a full week that we've had the kiddos in class and um, I actually stopped by Lincoln today because uh, the Waterloo Public Library has a little house with local books and it was amazing to see these kiddos grab all these books and, 
and it's been empty. Like they are grabbing these books. Chapter books are serious. Yes, they <laughs> so, are. But it's been it's huh. been really nice just to just see um, them outside and you know um, social distancing and using hand sanitizer. You have their mask on. I mean, to visually see that is really nice. So. Yeah, I don't need to say anything. You just gave my <laughs> report for me. It's like, <laughs> it was. I mean, I just say kudos, like to have that experience because I know a lot of people are on edge, you know. Mm-hmm. So if you do get a chance, go to Becker also. Becker, the, no, yep. sorry. We just did one Lincoln. site. We did so, one site this summer. Yep, we did um, one site. Just kind of drive by and just see the students out, how they're interacting. It's been great. Ab- absolutely, it has. And I have to give huge, huge kudos to Gina Weekly because mm-hmm. she has been working day and night and night and day to get kids enrolled in jumpstart and then once they're there really working we do have jumpstart in person and we also have jumpstart virtual we did have some families that said i really want to take advantage of jumpstart but i just i'm just not comfortable sending my my student right now so there is a there's a virtual option right now for jumpstart i believe we have about 40 students right now uh k5 that are in the the jumpstart that one and we have about a hundred and 98 if i remember about 198 that are attending face to face as of today so there are some hiccups Super. but i will tell you the positives overwhelmingly over uh, outweigh the negatives when you walk in kids are wearing their masks and they're you know they're fine with that and they're social distancing they're washing their hands they're learning their, their routine for using the restroom going outside I will say that that house, that is the main thing that kids, that the house with the books in it, because I have a, a child who's actually attending Jumpstart and she didn't get to go out there. And so she, it wasn't fair because I didn't get a book. And that, I mean, that's a big deal to the kids to get a book. So it has, it's been great. It has been great. And it's been great to walk through. I, I told Jane or Dr. Linderman earlier, it's wonderful to go in and watch teaching and learning happening and kids learning and teachers teaching and it's just amazing to watch that absolutely um give us an update about busing and i will just say a lot of people have been asking like i've seen the yellow buses what are they doing Mm -hmm. like so that has been new because we haven't seen buses since march so you know just to see the buses on the street has been like eye-opening for people who have not seen them for a while so Mm -hmm. how has that been working out Busing, of course, it's we're always going to have a few little hiccups where kids may have missed the bus or the bus missed a bus stop. Just those typical things that we have during a normal year that we've had. Um, I think it was you that mentioned two kids in one seat, which surprises me. Somebody. Um, two kids in one seat, which really surprises me because Durham did a great job at routing our students so that there weren't none of the buses are overcrowded at all. None of them. So if there was well, two students in one seat. Well, this child said that on their bus and um, that they start with the younger grades and go to the the back Mm -hmm. but that the driver was not saying like that it was full enough that they needed to have two per seat based on different age group wherever they were okay that's that surprises me because from what i know they were just doing one per seat unless it was like siblings or something that then they were doing later yep two per per seat but again there's always going to be hookups but overwhelmingly it has been a great program did you get a higher percentage this today as far as last week for attendance uh we did get some more we but we did have we had a large number sign up and a large number not show up today i will i will just say that that we put it out we had it filled up immediately and we got to capacity but then today when it came to showing up we had a large percentage of of our students not show okay hang on it's gonna be an interesting couple of weeks it It is is. it is for sure (laughs) okay thank you so much more no, that was it. Thank you, okay. Jesse. All right, I have two. First, I want to um, thank everybody who worked. I got to visit the uh, new health center on University Avenue for School District. Um, wonderful looking facility there, and uh, I'm very excited for that uh, new offering there. And just uh, work for uh, people to find find a building, but you know, it really looks like it really was designed to do what we're doing here. So, uh, fantastic job there. And then just also. Um, it was just nice. We did have a graduation ceremony this week, and then appreciate all the work by all the district to make that happen. I mean, it, I know there's some kids that weren't able to attend for various reasons, and that was later than what we want. But uh, it was uh, great to have something for those who could come, and definitely, you know, is obviously the importance of having that celebration, and you know. If you're very kind of see those nuances of 
for some people that is a you know huge moment in their lives maybe their biggest moment in their life so anyway great job good use of the facility i thought it went very well so congratulations to all the staff that supported that i hate going last i never have anything left <laughs> okay so keep going well i just want to congratulate all of our seniors after um a crazy end of your year but i hope you have good memories of your um education in waterloo and i hope you come back and tell us what you've done and um just appreciate maybe see your teachers another time when they're actually in the building and you can do that but congratulations to the seniors and then um just want to put a plea out to families to have um um, grace and compassion in this time it, it's a hard time for everybody and if anybody thinks that anybody in the Waterloo schools is making decisions to the detriment of kids they are wrong and I just um, it may not be your perfect choice but no choice is being made to harm to hurt or to make something go wrong with the child or our staff so i just um appreciate all the hard work of um the administrators teachers principals um paras um you know it just it's a lot of work and there are no right answers and it, it kind of reminds me of when you first brought a baby home and there was no <laughs> handbook to how you took and you look at this thing and you think what do i do with it and and it's kind of the same thing with this pant quit laughing shanley you did the same thing um, but, but it is it's just like like the pandemic i mean in simple terms that it's like what do we do with it and and maybe we'll make some wrong choices and maybe we'll make some right choices but all of it are meant for the betterment of that student or that child so that's all thanks sue sorry i was not i was laughing with you i was laughing with you i remember that feeling so all right aster are you still with me aster i am all right do you have any comments tonight you skipped safety well, I'm just going by you because you're next to me because of the speaker. I don't know. No. I told you, okay, my, my, my rhythm is all off tonight. So just go with what gotcha. I say. Gotcha. But, but of course, and, and, and I was prepared to go after Stacy too, but I knew that Stacy or Jesse was going to take both of mine. <laughs> Thanks, Jesse. <laughs> um, but no, I just wanted to comment on um, the center on university. Uh, the health center uh, had an opportunity to tour it uh, with Jesse and uh, Stacy, and it's wonderful. Um, hopefully, all the staff will take advantage of uh, it. And graduation, um, I made a comment uh, during graduation, um, just allowing those young people the opportunity uh, to walk across the stage. Um, if they didn't take advantage of it, you know that's it. You know something in itself, but you can't say that the opportunity wasn't given um, to the, to the uh, students. So um, congratulations to those students and those parents uh, for graduation. Um, and the ceremony was awesome. Um, and I, I believe everybody that was in attendance enjoyed themselves. So that's the two things that I have. Awesome. And I hate that I can't be in person with you guys. I miss you. Uh, we miss you too. <laughs> Don't you worry. We'll see you in two weeks. Thanks for those malts you ordered. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh all right Stacy now it's your turn <laughs> so. um I just wanted first of all to thank everybody for the RTL plan I think that parents are feeling a lot more confident and to echo what Sue said that your people are gonna feel like um it's maybe that not the choice for their family and that's okay I might feel that way but it's you know we're looking at a big picture and and I think that Jane and her team really did do that to the best that anyone could. Um, so as a parent, not as a board member, Stacy as a mom, um, I'm scared. Um, I feel bad for my kids that this is what it's going to be. Um, I feel bad for kindergartners and sixth graders and my own little freshmen that this is going to be their experience. And, this very you know they're in a new chapter in their education life which for them is like you know um, having a baby and so I just want them all to hang on 
um, do what they can to get the most out of it and, and find their rhythm and, and it will come. Um, and I, I mean, I'm scared after seeing all the cases that have happened in other parts of the country, but then I look at what they were doing compared to what we're gonna be doing and, and it does relieve some of the weight. You know, we're not gonna have hallways full of kids shoulder to shoulder with no masks on. It's just not gonna happen. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to say that to, it's not just everybody out there. We all are scared too. Um, and when, like Lyle said, that there's going to be cases, that terrifies me, but that is the reality of life. Um, okay, so on to something else, just a little bit. Do you have an update on the Kingsley roof update? Like anything happened? What was our deadline for that? Does anyone? Before for, school starts, I believe that this is not done. It is very close to done. Oh, okay. We talked about it on Friday night. My husband and I, and it was, it was, it appeared to be pretty close to done. Okay. So Thank update you. on the Kingsley. I'm just repeating what you said so that our viewers can hear it. Um, the Kingsley roofing project is, it's during, it's it's happening and it's closing in on being complete. We believe. Okay, thank yes. you. <laughs> we can double check with Marty tomorrow too. Just like to underscore that I think the return to learn plan is good. Uh, it's it's the parent responsibility to not only choose the option they prefer, but I think help make that option a success uh, for the good of their own students and and all students. So everyone needs to understand we're, we're in uncharted waters in many ways. And that, uh, but that hopefully if you've listened to the conversation tonight, you understand that everybody's willing to listen to suggestions and to uh, look at them with an open mind and, and look at them rationally and make changes as, as uh, are appropriate. So, uh, so again, underscoring what Sue said. Everybody needs to have some some patience and understanding. Grace. Yep. Here, here. All right. Well, the next time we will be at this table will be August 24th, which is the first day of school. So I just want to remind everyone, if you haven't registered your child, please do so. Um, we need to know that you're coming. We want you to be there, whether it's in person or whether it's virtual, so that we can make our plans and, and move forward. So Maybe mention the stagger chart because it won't be the first Yes, day it won't. I'm sorry. It'll be the first day for some of our students, for our K-1 sixth grade and part of our, yeah, and the A's in high school. Um, and then I'm not and even going to. Right. So, yeah, not everybody, but we'll school will be. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. You'll be getting information from your individual, your child's oh buildings. So, yep, for sure. So. Um, with that, I would entertain, unless there's anything further to come before the board, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thanks, and a second? Second. second. And all those in favor of adjournment, please signify by saying aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you, and be safe.